Hello and welcome to the latest in a series of interviews highlighting the strategic value of public relations to business. I'm Corai Kamgos from the Chartered Institute of Public Relations and I'm very pleased to be joined by Penny Fox, Director of Communications at the Department of Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. Penny, thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure. I'd like to start, if I may, by asking you about the role and responsibilities of the Communications Department here at the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. Of course. Uh, as a communications team, we're responsible for protecting the department's reputation, but more importantly, for making sure that our policies connect with the people that they're intended for. Uh, and in, as part of that, we have a huge range of policies, some of which are aimed at consumers, a lot of which are aimed at workers, and a lot at business. And so for us, the core part of our work is understanding who those audiences are and making sure that they get the information they need and that we need them to get to be able to do our jobs well as civil sure. servants. Thinking more generally, if you could send one single message to business leaders and CEOs about public relations and communications, what would that be? I'd advise them to know their audience, make sure they understand who their customer is, who they're talking to and what their customer needs from them. Sometimes we can get very, very caught up in what we know and what we feel and what we feel we would like to have communicated to us. One of the big roles of my team is to make sure that we're challenging the policy makers that we are not usually the end user, and particularly when we're in areas like the national living wage or holiday pay, that we need to be thinking about who the user is and what they need from us, both in terms of policy design or product design, if you're a different sort of business, uh, but also in terms of the message, and that the message can't be a bolt-on. So do you feel it's your responsibility to hold the mirror up and challenge decisions which are being made in the department? It's, it's a huge importance. Uh, we have a role to play at every stage of policy making and delivery. We have to be there at the beginning because if we design policies that can't connect with audiences, then they're not good policies. Uh, if we design policy delivery in a way that users will find too difficult to engage with or totally irrelevant or using a channel that is totally out of touch with them, then we will fail. So we need to make sure that the understanding and insight we bring to our audiences and the expertise that we bring in terms of how to reach them is really brought through at every stage of the process. So thinking about productivity, um, and the industrial strategy is aimed at boosting productivity, and given the fact that engaged, motivated employees tend to be more productive, um, do you think there's an important role for internal communications professionals to play? A huge role for internal comms. Uh, internal comms is often undervalued in a lot of organisations and, and can sometimes play second fiddle to the external world, uh, whether that's the marketing or, or the broader external comms side. However, as you say, if you don't have an engaged workforce who are bought into the mission of what you're doing, then you've got a real challenge. And it's a challenge we've faced here in the department, is how to make sure that an organisation of more than 3,000 people feels like they've got a stake in what we're delivering and in the broader message, because our best ambassadors are our people. So thinking more generally about communications within the department, what do you look for when hiring PR and communications professionals? The most important thing for me in hiring people is knowing that they've got an understanding of what they're trying to achieve, what communications can do, and fundamentally understanding the audience that they're trying to connect with. Uh, we so often fall into the trap in communications of communicating the thing rather than communicating to the person. And one of the big shifts I think government communications has made in the past decade has been a real shift towards understanding our audiences better and, and treating them with a bit more respect. Understanding what they need from us and what format they need it and how they need that message to land with them. So being a lot more disciplined with ourselves about what we do and why we do it. And can you give any particular examples of where messages have resonated well and you've prioritised your audiences effectively? We ran the first ever Green GB Week back in October last year. It was part of our clean growth strategy, a way to get businesses in particular, but also citizens more involved and engaged in clean growth and climate change. And it marked a real shift for us in how we communicate about climate change, less about the problem and the issue in raising the awareness, because the awareness is very good. This was a real shift for government in terms of how we talk to it into more about the opportunity and the potential. Uh, there is huge business potential in how we adapt to climate change. We've seen it here in this country already with thousands of jobs in renewable energy, other areas of clean growth, and in broader sustainability. Uh, we need to make sure that we're capitalising on that so that 
we as a nation are a global clean growth leader. We are the world's greatest centre of green finance. We need to make sure we maintain that position. And so communications has a huge role to play in getting businesses to see where that opportunity is and citizens to buy into it and value the companies that are operating well in that space. And so it was a big, big challenge for us in a first ever week, not much money, how are we going to do it? Um, and we did it in a number of ways. We did a lot of one-to-one -one work with businesses, getting them to sign up to uh, Green GB Week pledges on how they were going to do things in their own businesses and with their supply chains. But we also did a lot of citizens' engagement. We worked with the BBC on EastEnders storylines on, on green issues. We lit up the London Eye green and the hydro in Glasgow and uh, BT Tower. So we're doing some big citizen engagement pieces, lots of news stories around some of the really exciting science in this space, which really gets people excited, uh, as well as the business work, but with a real focus on switching the narrative away from problem to opportunity. One innovation that we've made recently to the team was to set up a dedicated stakeholder PR resource within the external affairs team, whose role is to really understand how we can bring together the stories of a wide variety of organisations who are working with, in common cause with us uh, and try and find platforms to make those stories sing more. And how do you feel that's gone so far? It's been brilliant. Uh, we've had some great results. The stakeholders we're working with are really energised by it. They often don't have the resource themselves to be able to make the connections. We're in the privileged position of having a large department which has connections into pretty much every part of the economy. So we've got the ability to join up the 20 organisations who are working on uh, early diagnosis of, us, of Alzheimer's from totally different directions to try and tell a really interesting story about how the UK is tackling that challenge. And just finally, could you give us an example of where the comms department has delivered a particularly important government objective? One thing I'm always immensely proud of is the work we do on our workers' campaigns, on fairer workplaces. Um, we looked at the most recent rounds of that campaign, and it goes through stages of having a lot of marketing, uh, effort put into it, but then also some very, very PR-led phases. It's wonderful to look at the results of that campaign where we're asking people to check their pay, to report it if their employers aren't paying them properly, but also trying to raise awareness with employers of what their responsibilities are to pay the living wage. It is amazing to look at the numbers that we're putting back in the pockets of the lowest paid people in the country through good communications and knowing at the end of the day that if over the course of a month five million pounds has gone back to some of our lowest paid workers, that's because of the work that we did as communicators. And we can absolutely track that at every stage, the communications we do and the impact it has on the increase in numbers being reported. And at the end of the day in government communications, we're all trying to make people's lives slightly better than they were before. And that's one for me that I take a great amount of pride in. Penny, thank you very much for joining us.